I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about the Apple CarPlay HUD. I'm gonna give you guys instructions on how to set it up properly so that it works properly with your Tesla Model 3. And I'm gonna give you all the pros and cons and let you know if it's really worth that money or not. Check this out. What's up guys, Million from Cameras to Freedom and man, this is the second part, Apple CarPlay HUD review. Uh, the first part was installation and if you did watch it, thank you so much. So let's go straight into it guys. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that we need to know about the menu system and also set it up with your iPhone so that way you get Apple CarPlay in your car and it's working properly. And I'm gonna give you all the pros and cons. So if you haven't yet, please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you for your support. All right, let's get back into it. And just to let you know, I'm going to put the link to the HUD in my description and using my code, you're going to get 15% off on top of this and every Tesla accessory in that website on Tillard's website. So if you do check it out, uh, I appreciate you so much for the support. And you also get a 15% discount. So it's a win-win for everybody. Come on now. You slide from the right part of the screen and you go into the gear icon and that goes into all your settings of the monitor. And of course, first select Model 3 Fahrenheit if you are living in United States. Luckily for me, I am in Southern California where the weather is perfect. All right. Phone connection, CarPlay, of course. Uh, call, auto, mode. I have mine at night and I'm gonna explain why later, but you should typically have it in auto so that way during the day you get the white screen and during at nighttime when your main screen flips, to the dark mode, your small little screen will also flip to a dark mode. So it, that's recommended. Of course, the color is going to be the color of your car. Mine is white. And the time zone for California is GMT7. So you could figure out your location and change to accordingly for your time zone. I got 12 hours instead of 24 hours. Military times 24 hours. Steering wheel control. I like to leave it on. It's really cool. Leave it on so that way you don't have to keep touching that little monitor to mess around with the options. Leave that on. Brightness, auto. Well, let's talk about the fact that this HUD screen gives you all the instrument clusters that you're used to. I love the design, by the way. It looks really cool. The style is very nice. They kept it very clean. So you automatically get on the left side the mouse power, and on the bottom of that, you see the 73 percentage, your battery, and it reflects your big screen as well. So you can see that there's a little meter on the bottom that shows you just how much is left. And on the top, you have little tiny icons which shows fog lights left clicker low beam high beam right clicker and if your seatbelt is on and in the middle of it you see the digital mouse power all right and on the bottom of that you get the parking reverse neutral and drive icons and on the right side that meter is to show you if your car is using regenerative braking or if it's using the batteries and on the bottom of that you get the trip it always goes to zero and starts from the beginning as soon as you get in the car and then as you're driving it tells you how many miles you've driven through the day and once you get out of the car and go back in it resets itself it has the odometer i've only had this car for seven months and already i'm at 24,000 miles i'm driving way too much i'm telling you and of course battery icon on the bottom right that shows how many miles i have left for the battery i actually enjoy this instrument clusters right in front of my face i actually have it on night mode because it kind of blends in with my black dashboard and it still gives me that minimal look whereas when it's in automatic mode but it's that's just a matter of preference of course right you, you could keep it any way you want to Okay, so let's go straight into, I have iPhone, so I'm gonna talk about Apple CarPlay. If I have Android, of course, that's Android Auto. I'm gonna show you guys the proper way to set it up so that way it works properly and all the audio isn't just coming out from the speaker within the little monitor itself because by default, all the audio comes out from the little monitor and you want it to come out from your car. Okay, let's go and set this up. I'm gonna go to Bluetooth and you're going to find BT-Link. Let's go ahead and sync that up. It wants to pair I'm gonna pair it all right there it is so I actually love the way the Apple CarPlay looks right I'm so used to using Apple CarPlay from before that I kind of missed it you could actually use the uh, scroll on the right side up and down is going to flip from instrument clusters to your Apple CarPlay with my right scroll wheel you can select your icons I do like the fact that you get ways and to press enter you don't actually push it you click it to the right so once you have your Bluetooth connected now you have to connect your car Bluetooth to this HUD system. To make that connection, you actually have to go to the Bluetooth icon and you push the plus button. Let's go ahead and connect to the BT-Tesla. 
and then you connect it. Boom. And then you also have to activate priority device. So that way, Tesla will connect to your HUD and the HUD will connect to your phone. So there's this multiple chain link that needs to happen for this to work. So that way, anytime you play music, Spotify, then it's going to send the audio to the HUD, but then the HUD is gonna send the audio to your Tesla. So then that's how, in the very end, you're gonna get the music coming out straight from the Tesla speaker and not the speaker that's built into the screen. So one of the cool thing about having the HUD Apple CarPlay in your car is that if you are like myself, I have a calendar, and my calendar tells me where, what job site I need to go because I'm a photographer and videographer uh, every day, different locations. So I could click on the calendar and then it'll tell me exactly where I need to go. And when I click on it, it's going to give me the address. And when I click on it, of course, it's going to open up Apple Maps and I get to use Apple Maps to go to my destination. But what I really missed about owning a Tesla is that I got used to coming into my car and my Tesla automatically knowing where I need to go and it activates the uh, map right away. So I don't actually have to push anything. Once I'm sitting down, the map is on and I'm ready to go. So I kind of like that. So I'm in the fence right now, right? Because I do love the Apple CarPlay and I love the way it feels. It, it makes it feel like as if your phone is part of your car and you just have this unity feeling about it. But the Tesla app itself also has a good software too that kind of works well with your phone just that one tiny little feature which isn't a big deal won me over so i currently have apple carplay disconnected to my hud so now i mainly use it for the instrument cluster which i still love having right in front of my face um it still has a very minimal look especially since i have it on night mode and it's blending into the background so there's one downfall of having this monitor is that it blocks the air conditioning flow to your face so right now if i want to fear air conditioning in my face i have it set that the air conditioning is blowing straight and to the side so that way if i need to fear the air conditioning i can just lean a little to the left and then i'm going to feel the wind a little bit right i'm so I, it's not a bit i could just do that and get the wind and just cruise just just like this right i do love the fact that it looks exactly like the tesla monitor the color the design the actual curvature on the edge like a little mini me the material feels the same even in the back it has the same groove so it looks very uniform it looks very oem like tesla made it themselves your car interior look a little bit more higher end i like it i like the way it looks so in the very end, I do love the way it looks, uh, Apple CarPlay, just because of that one little feature that I love with automatic map opening up on my Tesla that I'm just gonna use my Tesla connection instead of the Apple CarPlay. I know, what a silly reason, but I'm telling you, when you get used to that, when you're used to just coming into your car and all of a sudden your car already knows where it needs to go and sets the map and you don't have to do nothing and you just go, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of a cool thing that not a lot of cars have. So I love it. And whereas, of course, you can use the HUD, the Apple CarPlay calendar, and then open up map and go into it. But that's just an extra couple of clicks more that you need to do, which in this life, we are so spoiled that we can't even click a couple times to just do what we need to do. And if we could save ourselves a second, we do. <laughs> we do. Oh man, just thinking about it just makes me feel so ridiculous. But that's the technology nowadays. Sooner or later, you're just going to be a potato. You don't have to do nothing and everything is done for you just with your thoughts. I mean, come on, no more going to the library to do some research to figure out what this is all about. Now everything is in your phone and sooner or later, it's just going to be in your glasses and it might even be in your brain, a microchip, Neuralink, who knows? This is actually becoming a crazy world, but I'll tell you what, we're just going to have to enjoy it as it comes, right? All right, guys, if you haven't yet, once again, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you watched it all the way through, thank you so much. And I will see you next time.